Hey everyone, welcome to an afternoon of learning with PTK student engagement team. Whether you are a chapter member, um, just trying to learn a little bit more about getting involved, maybe you are a chapter officer and you're wanting to um, learn, learn a little bit more about how you can serve in that role. Maybe you're an advisor and you've been doing this for a long time. Maybe you're an advisor and you're just starting to learn a little bit about this. Um, we are excited to have you on. Uh, today to talk about one of the things that is um, near and dear to all of our hearts at PTK headquarters and one of our proudest traditions within Phi Theta Kappa, and that is the college project, um, which is something that if you are at a chapter, um, you really should be taking advantage of this opportunity. You're going to learn today um, how you can utilize this to your advantage and how you can really build um, bridges to, and kind of build a network uh, on your college campus to make sure that your chapter has allies and supporters, whether that's faculty, staff, administration, um, really make PTK uh, the premier organization on your campus. Uh, but before I turn it over to Jennifer, I wanted to just make sure and introduce um, to our student engagement team members. Some of them, most of them are here today. Um, one of our uh, members are traveling, but on the student engagement team, I'm our chief engagement officer, Blake Ellis, thrilled to be here. Um, Susan Edwards is our associate VP of honors program and undergraduate research. If you're thinking about doing honors in action project or trying to get published in the undergraduate research journal, um, definitely want to connect with her. She's not on the call today as she's traveling to our honors program council meeting, um, but I know she's happy to help as well. On the call today, we have Patty Van Adder, who puts together all of these sessions and is our chapter outreach and development coordinator, a real expert and a real wealth of knowledge, whether you are a student leader or a chapter advisor trying to figure out, you know, what am I doing in this role? Um, she's also a former regional coordinator for the Middle States region. Um, so she worked with one of our strongest, biggest, loudest, proudest regions at Phi Theta Kappa. Um, encourage you to, you know, get to know her um, as she, as you move forward in your projects. We also have on the call today, Reagan Chastain. If you've heard about PTK Edge, um, we have so many different courses that add skills for your resume and teach you things um, about uh, that you'll need to know as you move forward in your career. Whether you are trying to get hired right now, you wanna add soft skills, learn about research, um, you know, what transfer successfully, Whatever, um, whatever it is that you are, are focused on right now, we have a course for you. And it's Reagan that designs those courses and makes those courses pop so that when you go through them, um, you're gaining skills in a way that's really fun and hopefully relevant um, to your career path. Yeah, I noticed too, I was just uh, checking the chat to see uh, you know, if anybody's there. And I, and I noticed um, that we have, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer has already mentioned Say, which I appreciate. Um, if you're here, uh, you know, let us know you know, where you're from, your chapter, your city. Uh, PTK is like this big network um, of, of supporters and allies, and it's wonderful and fun for all of us to see what parts of the country you're in, or if you're in one of our um, nine non-US countries, what country you are from. So don't hesitate to uh, let us know that in the chat. But I'm going to turn things over now to uh, really our biggest college project expert we have at Phi Theta Kappa. And this is Jennifer Stanford, our Associate VP for Program Implementation. Jennifer worked to develop this project and has for many years worked very, very closely with chapters. Um, and she can guide you and give you some insights into how you can make this work for you. She's also someone who knows all things PTK programs. So don't hesitate to put her in your email address book and you know, email Jennifer when you have questions. Um, but on behalf of the student engagement team, welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're here to support you and to help you. So if you have questions, um, don't hesitate to put them in the chat. Also, if you're thinking about stuff besides the college project, that's totally fine. Today, we're focused on college project, but don't hesitate to reach out to us and let us know how we can support you as you move forward in your journey. Um, thanks for being here today, and I'll now turn it over to Jennifer Stanford. All right. Thank you, Blake. Um, yes, we are thrilled to see uh, such great participation, especially for a summer afternoon. So thank you guys for being here. Um, if you joined just in the last minute or so, if you don't mind putting your name and college and as Blake said, uh, state uh, and or country, if you're out of the U.S., 
we we know that we've got people from all kinds of experience levels in Phi Theta Kappa. The chapter leader session really brings together a lot of new officers that maybe have just started in their role over the summer. And so we it's really important that we uh, kind of break down Phi Theta Kappa's engagement picture really fast so that we're all on the same page. And there really is a method to the madness when it comes to PTK programs and benefits and the way, the best way for your chapter to make sure they're participating and getting the most out of their Phi Theta Kappa experience is our five-star chapter plan. And the college project is one of two primary projects that your chapter is going to do on your way to that pinnacle level of five-star. And we believe very strongly that's what the student engagement department exists for, is to help chapters reach that highest level. Although every level is important. It's foundational. Uh, it's all about recognizing students for their academic excellence and then slowly getting involved in that leadership and engagement in PTK programs and benefits. Uh, but there can be an intimidation factor of just thinking, hey, we're a small chapter. We really, we should go for maybe two star this year. And we are here to tell you that there are many, many uh, chapters in Phi Theta Kappa that may induct large numbers of students, but the ones that are coming to meetings, it's a small group. And a small group is all you need in order to be a fully engaged chapter. So it very much is possible. And we're here to help support you in that journey and make sure that you can, that you have the resources to make it to the five-star level. Um, the college project today that we're going to be focused on appears at the level four. And if you're working on five-star, you know that you're working on multiple levels at the same time. That's how it's uh, meant to be. Uh, but four-star is the featured level for the college project. And then honors in action is at five star. And that's our other primary chapter project. And so many chapters will work on these projects simultaneously. Uh, you see the January through December, uh, activity timeline there. And please know that if you're just now getting started, you are in the right place. You have plenty of time to achieve both of those projects in the remaining months of the year. Um, if you have already started your college project, would love for you to uh, just note that in the chat if you are well on your way. Uh, but chances are there are going to be a lot of people that haven't. But that that helps us with knowing the communications that we should really focus on uh, during the next uh, presentation time. So I have asked, uh, normally uh, some of these workshops we do as a panel presentation, we sometimes have co-advisors, and today we're going to do things a little bit differently. I'm, I'm sort of walking us through, facilitating through the presentation, but I'm going to call on this fabulous team that I get to work with uh, to get their, their perspectives as well. Uh, some of you may not realize until Blake was sharing in, in the introductions that, you know, we we really do have headquarters staff that come from all backgrounds, but we are particularly blessed in the student engagement department because we have three former chapter advisors. And so not only do you have uh, Phi Theta Kappa alums like myself and Patty, but we also, you know, Patty was a chapter advisor and coordinator, Reagan was a chapter advisor, and Blake was a chapter advisor. So I really asked them to kind of, you know, think back to their chapter advisor days and, and share some of that, uh, those best practices that they had. Uh, but what is a college project? Let's uh, just center in on, you know, so we're all together on what we see as a college project. There is a misconception sometimes about what a, a chapter should do for a college project. It's easy to see that, and we've got go-getters in our chapters, and they sort of plan it and implement it, and they forget, or maybe they're just unaware, that this really is meant to be a joint project with your college administration. It's not just about, you know, the chapter doing something on behalf of the college that they think is going to be awesome and a, a welcome service. Uh, but no, it's really about that relationship. We want the chapter to have a very positive 
uh, working relationship with the administration. And even more important, we want the administration to see the Phi Theta Kappa chapter as a true partner, an ally, if you will, as the title of our workshop is that, you know, we're not just another student organization on campus, but we really are there to uh, raise the profile of community colleges and to recognize all community college students and the mission of community colleges. And Blake, I'd love for you to jump in here and just talk um, a little bit about why Phi Theta Kappa has a college project, what, you know, the idea that this is about that relationship and how important administrative support is for Phi Theta Kappa chapter, just based on your own experience. Yeah, Jennifer, happy, um, happy to comment on that. So at Phi Theta Kappa, our mission has been and continues to be quite simple. And I always say it's the simplicity of our mission that has allowed us to be such a major player in higher education for almost 104 years now. We celebrate student success. That is, we um, recognize the best college students in the country. And then the second part of our mission, we help them grow as scholars and leaders. Now, there are Phi Theta Kappa members that say, <clears throat> you know, I want to be a member and I've earned the GPA. If all you get from Phi Theta Kappa is recognition, that's fantastic. And we're thankful for that. If you get your pen, put it on your resume, maybe you get, uh, you know, take your online access to some of our courses that we offer, maybe get the regalia when you graduate. That's fantastic. Just that is important to recognize that you achieve something um, that most students are not able to achieve. But the second part of our mission and the one the college project really ties to is to help you Phi Theta Kappa members grow as scholars and leaders. And so one of the two major projects we do at the chapter level to help you with that is the college project. And so the when you, when you look, for example, at the top transfer students in the country, let's just take the Jack Kent Cook Foundation, right? You may have heard about this big transfer scholarship. I think this past year, 92% of, um, of the recipients are Phi Theta Kappa members. They're not getting those uh, accolades and winning those scholarships just because it says PTK on the transcript, they're getting it because they have done specific things that they can put on their resume that they can write about in their scholarship applications that they can put in their transfer essays that demonstrate how they've risen above all the other students. The college project is going to help you do that. And so I want to encourage you, if you are just thinking, we're just getting started, I'm not sure you know how we're going to do this, document everything. Even if you just were the person to organize the meeting with the college president, that is something that demonstrates leadership. If, for example, your college president says, you know, what we want this year is a community garden, and you have to pull together a few different partners to make that happen. As you do that, you're doing things that you can put on your resume. And, you know, for example, you may get a question um, on a scholarship application that says, you know, what have you done to make a difference on your college uh, campus or in your community? The college project, right? You're going to be able to write about that. So the reason we have it is because it benefits students in their journey and helps them grow, but also it solidifies the relationship between the chapter and the college. And I'm going to tell you, and I will just, you know, put my cards on the table and be blunt here. I worked in student success for years before coming to Fight Theta Kappa, and I appreciate and love all the student organizations, but they're not all Fight Theta Kappa. And let me be clear, we don't have almost a thousand universities giving scholarships to every organization. They're doing that for Fight Theta Kappa because we have a long history embedded with the community college movement and the movement for equal access and education. So we have lots of partners and a big broad network we want your chapter on campus to be sort of constantly reminding your college administration and your faculty and your staff why Phi Theta Kappa has had this long history. So the college project will benefit you, but it will also benefit the chapter as you build bridges within the college community. And then when people think of change creators on your college campus, they're automatically going to go to Phi Theta Kappa. That's why when we publish the top college projects every year, we call our journal Change Makers because what you're doing is creating change in your community. Jennifer, you know not to throw it to me unless you want a long <laughs> No. I will, no. I will turn it back over to you. That was perfect. Thank you so much, Blake. And it, it is true. And, and we do want you to be change makers 
that are focused on the college's mission and what the strategic priorities are for the college right now. So you may have your own ideas about, you know, having been a student at your community college, maybe for months, maybe for more than a year. Uh, but it's it's extremely important for you to know that this is your opportunity to share with the administration that you are there to help them meet their college mission and priorities. So, you know, we know Phi Theta Kappa chapters need a lot of administration support. They are the ones that appoint uh, the hardworking chapter advisors uh, that provide fin financial support, that come to induction ceremonies, and so many other ways that they make a Phi Theta Kappa chapter possible on your local campus. So this is that opportunity for the chapter to really reciprocate that type of support. And we want it to we want you to know that it does not have to involve a specific Phi Theta Kappa program. Uh, there are ways that you can utilize Phi Theta Kappa's resources to help implement a college project, but it is ultimately up to the college president or campus CEO that determines what the focus is going to be for your college project. So that means it's extremely important for you uh, to be meeting with the administration to, uh, and we're going to show you, we're going to break that process down for you in just a moment. Um, there is a, a, a rubric that we believe is a blueprint for you to know what the best practices are for implementing a college project. And there's also other resources like our activity guide. And this is a fairly new resource. So advisors on the call, we want to make sure you know about this too, even if you've been in PTK for a long time. We have this new resource that's online. It can be downloaded as a PDF, and it tells a chapter leader not only what they do in Phi Theta Kappa, but how to go about doing it. It really fills in those gaps of team building exercises, um, how to write professional emails, how to organize and work with other collaborators, and College Project has its own section of the activity guide. And these are just some of the activities that you'll see. This one, this part is devoted to the college project. So you can see, you know, it talks about setting project goals because you want to be very specific, right? You don't want to, you know, have sort of this nebulous idea of what is a successful outcome if your college president is uh, the audience for this project. So you want to be sure that you've uh, used some smart uh, goal setting uh, to, to come up with those outcomes that you're looking for in the college project. And then also collaborating. We know, again, we, we said that, that, you know, chapters can be working sometimes with two or three active members. You may have a lot more than that, and that's awesome. The more activity you do, the more it's going to attract other members to get involved. Um, but we also want you to know that you don't have to do a college project just with the Phi Theta Kappa chapter. You're going, going to be working with other departments on campus. Uh, whatever the focus area is, you're probably going to be partnered with certain departments and staff of the college. But then you can also bring in other uh, students, you know, other student organizations. So that's a great public relations tool for your chapter. If you want to read about some outstanding projects, Blake mentioned change makers. We've already got the uh, very first uh, edition that was posted last year. We're working on this year's version, so you'll see that in early fall. But those are about the top 15 or so entries uh, from last year. And, you know, it really gives you a good idea of what, uh, how diverse projects are. There's not just one or two areas that you'll see. You'll see a, a diverse um list of focus areas, again, depending on what the college's mission and priorities are, everything from mental health awareness to career fairs to working on scholarships and helping students connect with financial aid, uh, campus beautification, it really does run the gamut, uh, again, because it's based on your college's wishes. So the rubrics, as I mentioned, these are the main categories. This is the blueprint for your college project. Think of this as a checklist 
as you're planning and implementing the project to ensure that you're hitting all those elements of the rubric that we hope you're going to uh, be be uh, submitting a Hallmark Award entry so that you can get credit and really go through that very impactful experience of reflecting upon what has been done. As Blake said, you can really come away with some great stories, not only to tell in your scholarship applications, but also in job interviews and to list on your resume. And, you know, we don't want you to be flying blind. We have, um, you know, done a lot of the best practices that we have uh, distilled into this rubric, the categories that you saw that preparation and planning, leadership development, uh, communication, as well as collaboration, and then of course impact, they're all uh, contained in these major steps that you see outlined here. And one of the, the main things that your, your chapter is going to do first is you need to be familiar with your college mission and the priorities. And of course, your advisor can help with that. Most of the time, you're going to find that on your college website. Uh, but your advisor can help really explain the protocol of what is expected, the process of setting up a meeting with the campus CEO. Uh, if you can't meet with the president, then another top administrator is fine. Just you know, be prepared to explain that uh, so that the judge knows uh, that that was the person that was appropriate for you to meet with on your campus. Uh, but we want you to look at those, those priorities from the college so that you have an understanding and, and it can really be an informed discussion. Not that you're memorizing it, but that you're, you're showing that you're interested, that you're taking this seriously and you really do want to help. And that's going to go a long way with impressing the college administrator uh, that you're serious scholar leaders who really are interested in being an ally and partner with the administration. And so I wanted to, well, before we get into all these other steps, I wanted to hear uh, Patty. I know, Patty, you were, we were talking about your time as an advisor and what that process looked like on your campus with organizing it. You know, was it the entire chapter officer team that went into the meeting? Um, you know, how, how that went and how the, the leaders prepared for that meeting. So do you want to share some of the... I do. Well, thank okay. you. Um, usually, we worked um, in at our in at my chapter. We tended to focus on the beginning of the college project at the beginning of a year, right? Because if there was anything that was left over that needed to spill over into the summer or the fall, we had that time. So, um, in the, usually early in January, February, we would meet with the entire chapter. We would have a meeting and we would discuss you know, the purpose of the college project and what were some ideas, what were some of the things that um, students uh, wanted to go into a meeting to discuss. And we also had copies of our, um, uh, the college's mission statement, which was on the website and we had shared those with everybody. And we kind of brainstormed, like what were some things that would fall under each of the specific categories of the, um, mission statement that this that we could work on and a lot of the times I would as my role as an advisor I would say let's try not to talk about how bad the food in the cafeteria is or that you can't find a parking spot um, those are not really the types of things that we want to talk to there may be critical infrastructure that you want to address as a student with a college administration but Part of the planning before we would do that meeting is we would have a mock kind of discussion because you don't want to go into a meeting with the college administrative administrator and you're pointing the finger because it's not necessarily all their problem if there's a critical infrastructure um, issue with the college that you want to address, such as, you know, I don't know, safety on the campus or, um, you know, spaces for, you know, you to uh, gather and, you know, club space and stuff like that. And so you have to understand that the way you, you know, you have to have knowledge about it and then you have to go in with a open mind to have a discussion because the college president or the administrator will say, well, that sounds really good, but funding is an issue. We have all of these things that we need to focus on. So you have to be, you know, you don't go in there with this is what we want to do and this is all we're going to do. That's not how it works. You have to go in prepared for a couple of ideas and have a back and forth discussion. 
and then usually if it's something um, one of the years that I, I was really happy with um, our college project when uh, we needed a space and we just wanted to carve out a space in the cafeteria that we called a hub and it required funding because it required walls and we had to make sure that we uh, involved the entire college community in all of this and so we, most of the time when we went into the meeting with the college president or the administration, it was the entire chapter officer team. Not everybody focused on the college project, but it was good for us to have everybody there because if something were to change with one of our officers, another one could pick up and we could be more collaborative in that, in that process. Um, and so you, the, I think the key getaway, the key points I want to share with, with chapters are make sure, like your advisor will set up the appointment, I'm sure, with a college administrator. That's the easiest part, you know, that's easier for them to do that than you to figure out how to do that. But you need to have a planning meeting where you're discussing all these things. You don't want to go into a, a, a meeting with the college president and not have anything to say or just look at each other. That's not what you want to do because your time is precious and so is theirs. And you also want to go into it um, in a, as a business sort of venture with them and not so much of a demand like we want um, french fries and pizza every day of the week, right? So uh, being prepared and taking notes, that's key because what, if, if you have an official note taker and they're they're jotting, jotting down different things, that's going to become really helpful at the end when you're doing your homework because you'll think it doesn't mean anything now, but in the big picture when it's all done, that comment or that statement was really important. So preparation is key in meeting with your college uh, administrator. And one, one of the things I will say to the officer teams that are here, Please do not walk into the building where your college president is and knock on the door and say, hey, we want to meet. That's not how this works, right? You don't definitely don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you set up an official meeting with them through the, the protocol of the college. And so um, that's the best way to do it. So those are, my, those are my kind of like best practices when you get ready to meet with the college administration. Oh, that was great, Patty. And I, you know, I love the, I, the note about you know, you really don't want this to just be a list of complaints about the college. Right. Um, you know, the college administration is more keenly aware of, mm -hmm. of issues of, you know, that need improvement. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're working with budgets and staff and, and other restrictions. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's city, county, state, etc. There's a lot of stakeholders that are involved when it comes to running a community right. college campus. So that that idea of, you know, this is about spreading goodwill and offering to help. And so you don't want to put the administration, you know, on a defensive posture with your meeting. So this really is, you know, it's so important, as Patty was saying, to, to have that planning meeting beforehand so that you are prepared to talk, that you uh, have read the mission statement and, you know, strategic plan maybe that just outlines. And in fact, I'll show you uh, usually on a college website, it's going to be pretty easy to find the college's mission. And there's usually a section that may even involve, you know, their vision, values, strategic initiatives, et cetera. And this one from Butte College in California, they listed out, these are what they call their strategic initiatives. And if you look at this, basically every single one has room for a, a project that would involve students. It doesn't mean that you would be running the entire thing, of course, but that collaboration with another uh, college department to help them move the needle on their initiatives. And so uh, believe me, and you know, they're going to be very excited to have students offering to help and offering their voice to be heard on campus. So it's just a matter of finding the best place uh, based on, you know, the resources and uh, the opportunities that are available to you at this moment in time. So make sure you, you make time for that to be an open-ended discussion. And as Patty said, it's always good, you know, if you can have the whole officer team, I, you know, we know that scheduling might be an issue. So that those kinds of details can be worked out individually for you, whatever works best for you.
And then the reason why I left this in, we, we've done some advisor only sessions, but we want to just, you know, make sure that our students on here know that your advisor is there to guide and to coach you through this process, uh, but you're doing the work. Uh, and especially when it comes time to write up that chapter Hallmark Award entry for college project, uh, you want those notes that Patty mentioned, have as many people as possible taking notes. But the advisor, you're you're not writing the entry, but you can certainly be involved in helping, uh, you know, ensure that it's edited and assigning people that maybe are really good that can give a, a second review of the college project entry. Maybe it's a faculty member that would offer some tips and even a workshop to help them with that technical writing aspect. So it doesn't mean that you're completely hands off, but it also does not mean that you are personally writing the entry. And we just want to make sure that everybody is on the same page there, that you know that uh, the advisor has a very, very important role to play. This is a student development organization. So we want you to have those leadership uh, development experiences, but also to make sure that the advisor knows that they're critical in that coaching and, and really making the students aware of what the opportunities are and the resources that are available to help the students uh, complete them. Okay, so we're we're going to just kind of look at the rubrics in a in an overall way. We're not going to uh, have time uh, to devote to going through each element, but we want you to be familiar with this. They're at our website, and I think Reagan has already put this in the chat, but ptk.org slash hallmarks is where you'll find all of the categories for Hallmark Awards. Don't forget those chapter advisor awards, as well as you can nominate up to two uh, officers for a distinguished chapter officer, a member award. There's an entire chapter officer team award and even awards for administrators. So check those out and make plans to uh, be submitting entries for homework award recognition. We do that recognition in a very grand way at our PTK Catalyst, which is our annual convention. And we will be in Columbus, Ohio next April, April 20th through the 22nd. So make sure that's also on your calendar. But as you're planning for this, again, know that you're going back to those rubrics to ensure, you know, this is a great way to set it up where you can take notes under each point so that you have those critical details when you go to write the entry, but that you're also implementing things in a way that uh, is encouraging strategic thinking and really making the most of your resources. You've got a short amount of time to do a college project, so we want to help you take as many shortcuts as possible. So we've talked a, a lot about the preparation point. One thing that I will highlight on this slide before we move on is that it may be crystal clear to you why this particular focus area relates to the college's mission, but make sure that you're, you're crystal clear in the entry and explaining that on the entry. And sometimes it actually may not be crystal clear to you after the meeting with the administration. So, you know, have those conversations, you know, I'm sure your advisor can also help with, you know, really connecting the dots for you because you're going to be more motivated to complete this project if you understand how it fits in with the big picture and that you really are making a big difference by implementing this project, not only for um, the college, but for you personally, as we've already talked about. So those are really important things to keep in mind that it is a, a, again, a joint project. You're not doing this by yourself. And that gets us into our leadership development aspect. Um, I know that a lot of students, especially student leaders in Phi Theta Kappa, who are, um, you know, very motivated, uh, tend to think, okay, we've got this, you know, whatever our focus area is, let's get right into the action component. And we want you to take a little step back, sort of like with honors in action, where you do your homework first. Uh, there are probably going to be areas that you need to know, that you need to learn about, as well as skills that you need to further strengthen or polish before you implement the project. Again, remember, you've got a big audience for this, so you want to do a good job. You've got the college administration's attention, and so it's, it's really, really important to 
connect with those local resources and experts there on your campus, uh, but also to think about um, Phi Theta Kappa's resources that are available to you that you've already paid for with your membership fee, things like PTK Edge. And I know um, we have Competitive Edge that really focuses on soft skills and then Leadership Development Studies course where you can you know, zero in on particular leadership skills uh, to, to help you implement not only the college project, but also honors in action. So you can, you know, you can certainly apply the skills that you've learned uh, in one area to other things that you do. So one, one key area also, and I want to go ahead and get to this, and I'm going to ask Reagan to jump in. Reagan, one of the things that we really stress with, with chapters in their college project is that outcomes are not something that you can just, you know, at the very end, have a meeting and say, okay, what did we accomplish? So as a mathematician, I know that uh, quantitative uh, measures and mechanisms are, are something that you've dealt a lot with, but I'd love to hear when you were a chapter advisor, how you helped the chapter plan ahead to get that kind of you know, data for their entry? So of course there's always uh, surveys uh, that can be utilized uh, after you've, uh, um, you've completed your project, but you wanna make sure you don't lose your audience. Uh, so if you have an event, have your survey ready to go right then. Um, and so you can hand that out or give the link to that out um, as soon as the event's over because they're way more likely uh, to, to take part in that survey. Um, now, backing up just a little bit, you want to make sure that your survey is valid, uh, which is very important. Uh, we know that we can really make the data say anything we want to. Uh, we've seen people manipulate uh, surveys to, to make things look better or worse than what they are. Uh, so you can work with um, some of the statisticians on your campus. Uh, I'm sure uh, most of you have stat, stat teachers on your campus and just talk to them about how to create a valid survey and get some training. Right? We talked about leadership development uh, a minute ago. And so uh, that's that's some of the training that you could receive is on how to create and develop a valid survey. Um, and you also, when I think about collecting data, um, I think of three things, how many, how much, and how often. I say that about a thousand times uh, a day, I think, when I'm talking about um, when I'm talking about doing research, collecting information. Again, you want how many, how much, and how often. Um, and the more you can give details about those things, the better you're going to be. So uh, how many uh, people attended? Uh, was it just people from the college or were there people from the community there as well? How often did this event occur? Was it a single event or did you have the event multiple times? So all of these things are really important. Detail it out. I know Jennifer mentioned this early, but we only can we can only assume what you write. We can't read your minds, so you have to spell it out for us. Um, so make sure that in your write up that you're giving as much detail as possible, and not just doing like that whole we call it lip service kind of thing. Oh, we met with a college president. Okay, yes, you can say you met with a college president, but you need more detail than that. Um, make it make it more um, make it more interesting. Tell us a story um, is kind of what you want to think. Um, and then for qualitative, of course, you can also use um, you can also use surveys for that. But you can just also talk to people after the event and ask them, you know, how how they enjoyed the event, what was their favorite part of the event. Um, make sure uh, to also include maybe some feedback from faculty or from administration, uh, because we want to know what, how you affected the college as a whole, not necessarily just the student, the student population. And so I would also recommend that, that you, you look for those qualitative stories, not only from your student, from the student, uh, but also faculty, staff, administration, bring everybody in, tell us what everybody thought. So uh, I think that answers your question, Jennifer. And I'll throw it back to you. 
Yes, thank you. Thank you, Reagan. And I know uh, we're we're zooming through on some of the rubrics, but the most important thing is to get to your questions. And so we want to just back up a little bit. Heather had put in a question about if you do come well prepared to the meeting with the president, do you have a better opportunity to persuade the president to choose the project of your choice or does the president always choose an idea completely on their own. And I know, Blake, you wanted to uh, weigh in in particular on this. Yeah, that's it. That's a really thoughtful question. So I want to be sure and comment on this. Um, first, you know, caveat is it really does depend on the president and it depends on um, the college. So, you know, first and foremost, when we say administration, we love for you to start with the president, but it could be any of the administrators on campus. And you may encounter a college president that says, you know, I don't have time for this. I want you to meet with this vice president. If that's the case, just roll with it, right? Um, but it really does require a little bit of feeling the situation out. Um, Reagan said this, and I want to echo kind of what Reagan said in the chat, which is that in my experience um, and in a lot of our experience, it really does um, depend on the college president and it really does, um, the presidents are typically open to what your chapter wants to do. So you may get a president that says, you know, I, I have this idea and we're going to move forward with it. And if that's the case, you know, roll with it. But I think it really does bear mentioning that, you know, if you come in there well prepared, maybe one or two different ideas, it really shows that you um, as a group of leaders are um, engaged and active and thoughtful. An example would be, we just very recently, we're kind of in the process of launching ccsmart.org, our national campaign to promote community colleges. So like you're, you may say, we don't know what our college project is going to be, but Phi Theta Kappa is in the process, thank you, Reagan, in the process of launching CC Smart. We want to do something about advocacy for community colleges. We want to support, um, you know, enrollment. And maybe that's something you're passionate about, about breaking down the stigma of community colleges. You could go to your president and say, hey, here's a website and here's some things we want our college project to be about advocating for this particular community college. And we're going to go to some high schools and talk about it. We're going to get some, you know, advertisements in the community, maybe host a forum and talk about why community colleges is a smart choice. I, I guess my thinking on this is the president or the administration will always have discretion to tell, kind of push you in the direction they want. But generally speaking, they're going to throw back to you. They're going to say, how can we do this together? And so as long as you keep coming back and engaging them, um, I think that's really important. I saw one other question. It says, you know, do the advisors always make decisions for the chapters? Remember, as a chapter, yeah, I mean, the, the advisor is the college appointed representative to lead the chapter. So you want to be working with your advisors to loop them in. Um, but the more that you can collaborate, the better. And so, again, just like I said with college president, every advisor is different. There will be advisors that say, hey, you're the student leaders, go figure it out and they'll be there to support you. There are advisors that may want to kind of check in with you. Think of an advisor the way you may think of a faculty member in a class you're teaching, right? Like they, um, some, some of them may be a little hands-off, some of them are really hands-on, but they're going to give you some guidance to work with them. And it's important that you work within that system. So thanks, Jennifer, for, for uh, throwing it to me. Coach, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've got this slide up about strategic thinking again, just to uh, further emphasize to you how important it is to, you know, keep track of the process. Um, as we've been saying, you know, the, the purpose of the college project is not only about that relationship building, but it's also, and this is true of all Phi Theta Kappa programs, to really grow personally and professionally for the students. We want them to have that leadership experience, whether they have a title or not. And so the strategic thinking part, when we see that in the question that asks, you know, uh, that addresses this particular rubric, chapters tend to really just gloss over the process of carrying out um, this activity or this project. And so we really do want to see how they they thought through those organizational decisions that had to be made. And again, you're not doing it just on your own, but you are working with the college as well as perhaps other organizations on campus. And so that, that whole strategic critical thinking uh, element is really, really important. And these are just some of the skills that you're going to be getting great 
great experience in. And that if you, you know, even just use those subheadings for your notes, uh, you can take notes however you want to. There's no, you know, perfect format that has to be used. Uh, whatever works for the individual is perfect. Just know that uh, you want to share it later. So uh, be there to decipher or be, you know, make it where it, it can be read by others in your chapter. So the other part, and I'll, I'll just, you know, also mentioned when we talk about leadership development, we're always talking about intentional leadership development, not just uh, the fact that you're fulfilling a, a significant leadership role, but what you did to prepare. And there are, of course, you know, as we already said, things on campus to uh, access your regional events that are happening all throughout the year. Lots of times we'll have ed forums about PTK programs, and so you can certainly use that. Just be sure that you're you're being very specific with what you learned and how you applied it to the college project. That's the most important thing. As, as Reagan said, you're not just parroting back, you know, what the rubric said, but you're actually doing that show and tell. You know, this is how we did it. Um, so the communication cooperative effort, as we've talked about, the communication part, a lot of times chapters focus on the beginning. Hey, we've met with the college president. Now we're off and running and they forget that, you know, this is this is really important to keep them updated, you know, not to inundate them with emails. But, you know, certainly the de departments or others that you're working with are going to need regular updates. And then don't forget to tie a big bow on the end of this project by pre presenting a final report. Your college project homework awarded entry could serve as this. It could just be a meeting also with the administration to uh, talk about the outcomes, what needs to be done still. Those kinds of things are priceless with really emphasizing what was accomplished. And again, that relationship, you know, what, how it was strengthened, what, what were the observations that the college administration had for you and vice versa. There's really some, some great takeaways um, from that, that type of communication. So don't, don't forget those, those details. Um, we talked about impact. Reagan has already shared, you know, some really important ways to think about tracking and getting quantitative data as, as well as qualitative data. Uh, you always want to relate it back to what the college's goals were for this project. If for some reason there are new opportunities or obstacles that come up that are, you know, really uh, hindering your ability to carry uh, forward with the project, you always want to go back to the administration. They need to be the ones to say, OK, we're going to take it in a different direction or they can help resolve the obstacles that you've encountered. Um, if they, for some reason, ask you midstream to do a completely different focus, please don't stress about that. You know, we know that that can happen and we don't want you to, you know, be upset and say, we've done all this work and it was for nothing. It's not for nothing. You're, if the ultimate goal is that relationship with the college administration, you are being a team player and working towards the greater good by fulfilling their wishes for the project. And so that gives you some great detail to you know, focus on your creativity and your flexibility of carrying out their wishes. And, and that's ultimately what's most important. This is just a, a quick example um, and, I, and I loved, you know, how Reagan was talking about this, too. And Reagan, if you have anything else to add, but sometimes there are uh, things that we we can say in a way that that maybe don't make it really they don't really capture what all was accomplished. You know, it may be that you were uh, working on an event and that part of that process was that, you know, you would write it as we were responsible for chairing this event's promotional committee. Well, there's a lot of quantitative data there just begging to be explored. And so this is just an example of how you can really uh, go back and, you know, 
uh, really reframe something entirely so that you're you're making uh, measurable data out of every possible aspect. Because again, and I know Patty said this, we can only go by, or maybe Reagan, we can only go by what is written up. So we can't know what all the impact was because we weren't physically there at your campus to witness it. So we were relying on the chapter to share those kinds of details. And this is extremely important for putting it into context uh, and not just, you know, assuming that the judge will know the size of your campus and what that uh, committee really did. And I'll and jump the, in right yeah. here. Oh, yeah. I think all of us decided to jump in. Oh, uh, good. Yeah. In. Okay. And also say that this is also a skill that is, um, is part of what you should be doing on your resume. So if you are applying for a job or trying to re reestablish your your resume, um, if you go and look for resume tools, resume, you know, you can find some resources about how to rewrite these things so that they are are telling a better story. Again, it's all about telling a story and giving um, uh, the numerical value that goes along with that story. So uh, if you, and I, I'm actually was trying to look up a few websites, I'll try to find a few and throw them in the, in the chat, but basically it's, it's a resume skill also. So if you learn it for, for uh, writing up your hallmarks, you can turn around and use it when you're uh, editing your resume also. Absolutely. I know Patty, you were you wanted to jump in too, is that? I did. One of the things that we used to, when we were in Hallmark writing period, or even throughout the, you know, when we were just doing casual notes or keeping track, if as an advisor, I would look at it and say, okay, you went to this meeting, how many were there? You're not telling me who's there. So if I'm asking you, so are the judges. The judges are going to want to know. We need as much details as the, as you can provide because if, if you go back and the judges are reading it and they're going, well, okay, they, they chaired the student event, but what about it? You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you don't want to leave them with more questions. You want to, you know, answer as fully and in detailed manner as you possibly can. Right. Anticipate, Anticipate. what would be asked. What could give it more context, you know, because... You know, that's true in fundraising, you know, a, a chapter uh, could raise, let's say, $10,000, but if they had 100 members raising $10,000, that's one thing. But if they had five members raising $10,000, that's quite another. So always think about the context when you're, you're writing for whatever. I mean, resume, scholarship, applications, and hallmarks. And then this is uh, some examples of really getting those qualitative uh, impact and that can come from the participants that have you know benefited from your college project that can come from the administrators or other college personnel you know their observations uh, the observations of your members and how they grew through this process you know but look for those specific details that can really not just again, say, well, we grew as scholars and leaders, but how did you grow as scholars and leaders? What was a, a, a real takeaway from this project? You know, what did you improve? Uh, what new uh, perspective did you gain? And Blake, if you, did you also want to share anything else? Because I didn't want to, I know everybody was kind of jumping in there. So if you had, okay. Didn't want to miss it if you oh, did. I was just pointing so you knew that Reagan and Patty uh, wanted to. And then Janet, I just responded to your uh, great question in the chat about a lot of, but for college project, you're right. It's quite possible that you will, for college project or honors in action, find somebody in the community that's doing some of that work already. We yes. strongly encourage that partnership. We're a nonprofit and we love to partner. And so, you know, it will be like um, if your honors in action research leads to just making this up, but say something about um, child homelessness in the community, you may have an organization, you know, that's doing that. And we, and in fact, even in the rubrics, we often have uh, collaboration and how, you know, who did you partner with? What did you do with those partners? That's great experience for students as well to then say, I brought together our organization with another to solve a problem in the community. So uh, yeah, good point and strongly encouraged. 
Yes, and and there are colleges that will you know want to or already have relationships with you know for example the American Cancer Society and the, hosts the Relay for Life event on campus and you know whatever the college project is again it's at the discretion of the college but we want you to collaborate that's probably the most important message out of this is because that networking experience is priceless for the students but it also increases your impact and at the end of the day you know we want this to be a highly successful project because you're laying a foundation for the next group of chapter leaders to continue to build upon because it's again it's all about that relationship and then really seeing Phi Theta Kappa as a true partner and ally on campus. So I know uh, we're we're almost we've got a few minutes so I think if if we have other questions if you want to uh, put them in the chat. Oh, Nicole says we did relay. Yay! Yeah, that was that was a, a Phi Theta Kappa program a few years back, and so that was uh, something that we saw a lot of chapters and community colleges uh, work on together. So, but is there anything, any muddy point that we we kind of uh, glossed over that we need to go back and and talk about? Um, I had the presentation rubric up. This is just, you know, the mechanics of the uh, presentation itself. Um, I will say, you know, five points. You may be thinking, oh, well, five points, that's hardly anything. We, we won't, you know, spend so much time worrying about proofreading. Uh, but that really is a very extremely competitive competition. And so five points can mean the difference between receiving a trophy on stage or in your region and not. So that again goes back to giving the students an opportunity to improve their writing and editing skills. So we we want you to take that part seriously and, and plan ahead so that you have plenty of time to do that. So Heather, um, I see you've raised your hand. So please feel free. Hi, Go ahead. Thank you. Hi. So I don't know if you're able to, but um if you could go back to this, you had a slide that had said um, it was after the rubric one, but it said like to to review the college mission and then meet with the president and agree to a plan. And I was just trying to put those bullets down. OK, was it this one? Um, no, yeah, that's it. That's it. OK, so yes. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, that's kind of a. a just a snapshot of the college project steps. Um, but, you know, again, it's it really is all contained as a checklist in the rubrics. Uh, I saw someone else ask if we're sharing these slides and absolutely Patty is going to be sending this out, uh, the PowerPoint as well as a link to the recording to all those who registered. And so uh, not only the ones that are here joining us will get it, but those that were not able to join us and Patty, you can also, you want to tell them about the website as well? I can. It's behind the advisor portal, so advisors can go can uh, access the chapter development page. Um, and on that page, you will find um, past recordings that you can copy the links of the recordings and share with your chapter. You can share the chapter development page with your chapter, but you can um, share specific links of what you might be looking for. And also the PowerPoints are there and the upcoming schedule. And I'll just put a plug in for that. Uh, yeah, yeah. July, July, we've focused um, totally on college project in all sorts of manners. And August, you don't want to miss out. We have lots of honors and action um, sessions in August. We will invite chapter leaders um, to the session on August 17th. And there'll be all this information will be included in the update that I send out to everyone um, by Friday. I was going to say to um, Jennifer, just, you know, uh, when we think about college project, and I'm just going to just say this, and you'll hear us say this a lot, make a commitment now to do it and to submit whatever you have done, because you may be, you know, starting out and I'm going to tell you your project, it may start here. And by the time that, you know, you finish and the holidays come around, maybe it gets a little lower, a little lower. We, you fight that Kappa, it can be competitive. We have 1,300 chapters, 29 different regions. And in Columbus at our annual convention, I will tell you, to be one of those top 50 chapters honored on stage is hard. You got to really, you know, those are the top projects and it's a competitive process. 
but everybody can be a five-star chapter. And for you as a student leader, as an advisor, and for your chapter and for your college to come together and say, we're going to do this. We're going to submit it. We're going to be five-star. That is really powerful. And I always say the group of students I remember most when I was an advisor, we didn't win anything. But we were the first chapter in years to be five star because we did college project and we did honors in action. And you know what? They all went on to win huge scholarships to places like Occidental College, George Washington University, and even the University of Texas. You know, nobody's perfect. I was kind of sad. thought they should go to Arkansas or somewhere. But, you know, it was a good school. They had a great time. So you got to commit right now to do this. And if you do, I promise you'll get so much out of it. So we hope all of you will be five-star chapters being celebrated next year. Jennifer, I'm turning it back over to you. <laughs> okay, thanks, Blake. Um, I went ahead and, and took the screen off because I know, or the PowerPoint off, because uh, I know Patty usually wraps up for us, but guys know that you can always reach out to a headquarters staff member. Our student engagement department, of course, is kind of frontline for getting you involved in projects and with homework awards participation and five star. Um, but we are all very happy to help you and we want you to have a great uh, PTK experience and to really understand that your time at the community college is so, so important. And we know you get busy. As Blake said, we know things happen and, you, and everyone has lots of priorities that they're juggling. Uh, but again, these are investments in your future. And so it is time well spent uh, to be engaged in Phi Theta Kappa. So with that, Patty, I'll turn it back over to you. No, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody, of course, and thanks for all the great questions. We love it when you have questions because um, we can't, we might not think of all of them, and it's a good way for others to hear um, some some of the things that you're thinking about. Secondly, I have to put a plug in. Have you set your five star chapter goal yet? Right, um, check with your advisor to see if you have done that. If you need assistance with that, let us know. Um, we'll be glad to meet with you. And if anytime you have any questions. Or or if you would like to have a meeting and talk about your ideas, you can do that too. Just send me an email um, and, and we will work on that. But thank you so much for coming. We will get a copy of the slides and the recession recording too by Friday. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Join us August 17th, Chapter Advisors and Leaders for Honors in Action. You are already registered. No need to register anymore. Um, once you register once, it's good for the rest of the year. And we have other opportunities that we will be meeting with just advisors about honors in action and all those details will be sent out then. So um, please don't sit at your chapter going, we don't know what to do, what's the next step? Please reach out to us, we wanna help you because every chapter can be a five-star chapter for sure. Um, real quick, I saw Janet just said you had one question. You had a question, what's the question, yes. Janet? Um, I know you guys put a PTK, there's a book, a national book that we all supposed to sign. We have a new lead, a new advisor. None of us have ever signed this book because the other advisors, um, they don't know where the book is at. We don't, we're totally in the blind about everything for PTK, about even by our role ships, about everything. So, Patty, I will be reaching out to you about everything because we are in the blind. Even about my role, I just found out what my role really is, which I'm going to be running for something else because I'm like a go-getter. I'll, I'll be reaching out to you right after this meeting, Jaina, to set okay. up an appointment, and we will go from there, okay? No worries okay, on thank that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're thank welcome. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for coming.